oh hello guys uh welcome back once more again to my youtube channel guys uh guru himself uh as i have promised guys that i will come back to you with question four and question five of the may june exam 2022 paper one okay so today i'm only going to focus on question four and question five okay question one and question three question one up until question three they are done then they are already uploaded so <clears throat> let's just get inside the question four and three to see i mean four and five to see what is happening about them okay right uh on question number four they say the average monthly retail price for orange juice per liter in canadian dollar for 2018 to 2021 is shown on the answer sheet the actual data values for each month each month in 2020 are also indicated okay so let's look at that type of the answer uh, the graph they're talking about okay right here is the graph that they talk about but let me do this so that everything can be seen here okay so when you're looking at your graph here we can see that we have this graph which represent 2018 we have this graph that represent 2019 we have this graph that represent 2020 we have this graph with two month months only that represent 2021 okay <clears throat> and again they have also told us that the price for 2021 have been indicated so these prices that we see here these are the prices for 2021 okay right so now we can go and look at our questions now okay the first question says calculate the difference between the price of orange juice in january 2019 in january 2019 and february 2019 okay so remember in Meslit when they talk about the difference they say you must subtract okay so we are going to check the price in january 2019 and february 2019 so our year 2019 is represented by this line so in january the price was 4,3 this was cat we can write canadian dollar 4,3 minus because they talk about the minus the minus uh the price in february was here 4,1 minus cat 4,1 which will then give us 4,3 minus 4,1 that gives us a uh, 0, 0,2 uh we can say this is what CAD 0,2 because this this is this values are given in Canadian dollars that is equals to CAD 0,2 okay <clears throat> let's go back to the question paper right so that our answer here is uh, CAD 0 comma 20 okay then they say write down the month and the year in which the price of juice was at its lowest so we're going to check where the, where all of these graphs combined which graph was down 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 there where the price was very very low okay so when we look at our graph we can observe that this point it is the one that is way down down okay so we're gonna check they want the month and the year so when we check the month here is the month of february and in the year here we're going to check this graph this graph represents 2018 that means the year and the month in which the price was very low is february 2018 so the price of that fruit juice was just low okay now they say state the month and the years in which the price of the juice was exactly the same 
so if you look here it means we have only one month but in different years the price was the same okay i repeat we look at one month whereby in different years the price was the same okay so let's go back to our graph so when we go to our graph we need to see where one uh, two years or three years share a point at one month okay so we can see january in january the prices were different in february the prices were different in march prices were different in april prices were different in may the prices were different in june the prices were different in july the prices were different in uh, august the prices were different in september prices were different in october you see all the points have their different prices in november we can see that this year and this year share a point in november so we want to know which years are those okay so we can see that this year represent 2018 and then this one represent 2019 it means that in november november 2018 november 2018 and november 2019 november 2019 the price of the juice was exactly the same okay then let's go to 4.1.4 they say determine the median the median price of juice for 2020 okay so let's go back there to the to our graph let me see if i can write somewhere so if you observe our 2020 day we are given the prices we are given the price in january february march april may june july august september october up until december okay so remember you cannot determine the median without arranging your data either in ascending or descending order okay so the first thing to do is to take our data and arrange it in in ascending order in this case we're going to use an ascending order okay so when you look at your graph your graph can already give you which number is the lowest and which number is the highest okay so when we observe here on our 2020 graph we can see that this point in this graph is the one that is the lowest that means our smallest number here is 4,06, okay? And then because this data was not provided for you, they did not arrange the data for you. When you arrange it, already you get a mark, okay? So <clears throat> we can check which number follows after this one. We can see that this point is lowest compared to this one. Therefore, the, the second number that comes here is 4,13. 4,13 and the other number that comes is going to going to be followed by 4,134 4,134 then we go up and check when we check here we have 4,24 but then this one is 4,23 meaning that this one is lowest compared to this one so we're gonna have uh, 4,23 followed by 4,24, okay? Then 4,24 is going to be followed by 4,26, which is this point, this point, uh, 4,26. Then 4,26 will be followed by 4,27. Then 4,27, if we check, it's going to be followed by 4,3, Four comma three, then four comma three is going to be followed by four comma thirty two. Then four comma thirty two is gonna be followed by four comma thirty five. Four comma thirty five, then four comma thirty five is going to be followed by four comma thirty nine. Four comma thirty nine, then four comma thirty nine is going to be followed by four comma. 43 so what you have to do again you have to count your numbers if they are 12 because the number of months there they are 12 so it's 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we are going to check our two middle numbers. Okay, another thing when it comes to the median, we have two different data. Our data can be even or it can be odd. Okay. Remember, the odd numbers are the numbers that when you divide them by 2, you get a decimal. And then the even numbers are the... the num uh, what did I say? Yes, even numbers is the data that when you divide it by 2, you get a natural number. Okay, so in this case, our data is even number. So if your data is even number... It means in the middle, there are two numbers. But if your data is odd, meaning that it can be 9, it can be 13, it can be 11, it can be 15, there will always be one number in the middle, okay? Because our data in that case is an odd number, okay? So if your data is an odd number, just know that you're going to find one number in the middle. But if your data has an even number, you have to know that there will be two numbers in the middle. Then you have to divide them by two. You add them and you divide by two. So let's check which numbers are in the middle. So we're going to count because they are 12. We're going to count five to the right and then five to the left. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Then here we count one, one, two, three, four, five. So the numbers in the middle... And remember, none of these numbers is a middle number. In this case, it means that the middle number is not within our data. Remember, in that handling, uh, the median, the quartiles, they represent the position of a number. Okay, so these numbers, it doesn't mean that they give us our, uh, they are middle numbers. They only help us to determine which number is exactly the middle number. Okay. So uh, our middle number, this, we're going to say 4,26 plus 4,27. So for us to determine the median, to calculate the median, we're going to say 4,26 plus 4,27 divided by 2, which will be uh, 4,26 plus 4,27. Uh, that gives us 8,53, then divide by 2, that gives us 4, 4,2, 4, 5. So someone, when they run it off, yeah, we just leave it like that. That is our, that is our middle number right there. Okay, then let's go to the next one. They say describe the trend of the price of orange juice from February 2018 to July 2018, okay? So we are going to check the, the, the trend, how the prices are trending, okay? So if you check at, at your 2018, they, they say from February. So we are going to check from here, from February, this is February. March, April, May, June, July, up until here, okay? So our trend is like this. The price of the fruit juice increases from February 2018 until June 2018. And then the price now decreased from June 2018 to July 2018. Okay, our price increase from February 2018 up until June 2018. And in the price decrease, there is a slight decrease here from July, I mean from June 2018 up until July 2018. Because if you can see, the price in June was high, but in July it was low. Okay. Remember, guys, uh, all I need from you, I need you to share my videos. I need you to subscribe to my channel. I need you to like my videos so that I can I can gain more momentum and then people can, can also get this free knowledge that I'm sharing here, okay? So, guys, don't 
don't be selfish send it all out so that we can i can i can reach as many people so that many people can pass me late okay so i'm being generous about the information here so i just want everyone to pass me late all right uh let's move to the next question okay for uh 4.1.6 they say an analyst predicted that the price of orange juice will drop by 0 0.16 CAD from February 2021 to March. That means the price that you have for February, when you go to March and then you compare them, it means the one in March will be less than the one of February with 0 0.16 because the price will have dropped. They say, Determine the year-on-year -year percentage increase from March 2020 to March 2021. So they want you to calculate the percentage increase. It means that the price have increased when they compare March of 2020 and March of 2021. So they want to know how it, the price have increased with how many percent, all right? So the first thing is that we have to go to the graph and then to do what? Because now you are already given the formula of new value minus old value divided by old value multiplied by 100. So that, that is how you're going to calculate your percentage increase. So what did you need here? You need the price of March 2020 and you also need the price of March 2021. So let's go to the graph to check how much are the prices for those years. Okay. So according to our graph, if you observe there, we are not given the price of March 2021, but we do have the price of March 2020, which is foreign, I mean, 4,33 CAD. Okay. <clears throat> but the statement above here have given us a hint. It said, an analyst predicted that the price of orange juice would drop by 0 0.16 CAD from February 2021 to March 2021. So when we go to the graph, we are given the price of February. So the price of February, it was given here. So all we need to do is to check how much the price was here on the graph. Okay. So let's look at the scale that was used to draw this graph. Okay. So if you check this scale, it says it says from here to here is going to increase by one. So it means that everything behind here is going to be behind four. So if I point here, it means that it, it might it might be four comma four three. Okay, so if you check this point, this point is not exactly in the middle of the graph. Because the middle of this block, it might be somewhere here. So we cannot say this is 4,45. Okay? Because this is not the middle of the graph. Okay? So we would agree if we say this somewhere, the price in, in February was 4,46. Okay? I just hope that people are, are, are do understand where I'm gonna get where I'm getting this. Okay. So we're gonna check the price in February. So we're gonna go this side. So we're gonna say this is four comma forty six. But they say this price now. Let's go back. That means we got the price in February, which is four comma forty six. Then they said this price in March is going to drop by. Is going to drop by zero comma one six. So how much is going to be the price of March? Four comma four six minus. 0 0.16 that means the price in March now is going to be 4,3 you, you can say 4,3 or 4,30 okay so how much was the price of the juice kind of this one is for March this is for March 2021 so we need the price of March 2020 and I, I believe that this price was already given on the graph <clears throat> yes on the graph it is given here it is on the graph the price is given as 4,23 let me remove the circle so that people can see 4,23 okay 
so the price of that in March in the, the price of the juice in March 2020 was 4 comma 23 so how do we calculate the percentage increase they say the new price the new price we're going to look at our latest year our latest year is March 2021 so we're gonna take the price of March 2021 which is 4 comma 30 we minus with the old value which is 4 comma 23 that is the price of March 2020 okay and then we're gonna divide by the old value which is March 2020 4 comma 23 then we multiply by 100 so if we subtract there 4 comma 3 0 minus 4 comma 2 3 it gives us 0 comma 0 7 then we divide here by 4 comma 2 3 then we multiply by 100 divide by 4 comma 2 3 multiply by 100 what have I done? 0, 007 divided by 4,23 multiplied by 100. That gives us, uh, we, we're going to round that to the nearer to two decimal place. That will be 1,65%. That means the price from March 2020 to March 2021, it has increased with 1,65%. Okay, <clears throat> right, let's go to the next one, 4.1.7. Now, in 4.1.7, they say the analysts predict a prediction for the price of orange juice for the rest of the year 2021 is shown in table 3 below. Use the answer sheet. And guys, when you're writing the exam or you're writing whatever, if you have the answer sheet, make sure that the answer sheet that is given on the question paper you remove it from your question paper and then you attach it on your answer sheet okay it might be the paper that you were given or it might be the paper that you came with make sure that it is stable it is stable to the to your answer sheet okay don't leave it inside your question paper don't answer it there in your question paper and then leave it so in this case it means that this paper was supposed to be you're supposed to write your name here and then your examination number there you remove it from your question paper you attach it to your answer sheet okay <clears throat> right uh let me just remove this so that because we are going to throw a graph here we are going to complete the graph of 2021 okay with those given prices so let's go and start already we have uh b -b -b january and february uh i think we also have march march is 4,3 march is 4,3 march is here 4,3 4,3 is gonna be here that means the graph will move from there and comes come here okay right <clears throat> let's go and check the price in april so in april is 4,25 Let's go and look for 4,25. So 4,25, it, it is going to be between 4,2 and 4,3. So it's going to be somewhere here in between the line of April. So it's going to be somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere here. But it must be below 4. It must be below 4,27. So the graph will move there to come here. And let's go and check the next one. 4,28 in May. May is 4,28. That means it must be above this point. Yeah, it must just be somewhere here. Then we take it up here. And then in June is going to be 4,3. In June is going to be 4,3. Where is our 4,3? Our 4,3 is here. 4 comma 3 c that means the graph will just move here but it have increased then in july is going to be 4 comma 0 5 4 comma 0 5 so 4 comma 0 5 it must be here right in the middle here right in the middle so we're going to take it way up there and it must come down it must come down then 
August is 4,35. 4,35 in August. August is here. 4,35. 4,35. This is August. 4,35. 4,35. It must be here in the middle here. So we're just going to take our graph and join these two points. So it's going to be here. Okay. And then uh, September is going to be 4,2. 4,2 September. 4,2 our September line is here so 4,2 is here so our point is going to be here for September okay and then for November is going to be uh, for October is going to be 4,15 uh, 4,15 4,15 it must be here because this is one then 1,5 4,15 is must it must be in between here so it can be here here so it's gonna move from here up until here and then let's go and check in November <coughs> 4,27 4, I saw 4,27 somewhere here yeah 4,27 is not gonna be this one it's gonna be somewhere here 4,27 and we take it way up there and then we check again uh december is 4,2 4,2 i think we have it is this line here and that will be our graph okay so that's how we have to do so after that after drawing that take the paper out attach it to the answer book okay right that that bring us to the end of 4.1 now let's go to 4.2 now 4.2 they say john consider moving from toronto in canada to either cape town or a lane in south africa and c shows a comparison a comparison of water tariff in some of metropolitan area areas in south africa john estimates that he will use an average of 45 kiloli 45 kiloliter of water per month use an extra c to answer the questions that fall let's go to that annex so that we just go through that annex okay okay this is annex c let me just rotate it right this is our annex c to be used for 4.2 you must also check this that this annex belongs to which question okay <clears throat> right uh so in the annex we are given cape town Egurleni. i mean etiquini Egurleni, johannesburg we have the monthly usage then the fixed monthly payment there we have the residential charge and we have the commercial and industrial so that means these ones they use them on the on on on, on commercial meaning that people have businesses there so they don't pay the same rates as residential okay so but remember uh who is this guy now uh john is, is, is a resident they are not talking about the business here so john will be in a resident place okay right so they say john state that if he choose to live in cape town he will be paying three thousand six hundred more per year compared to a person living in a who uses an average of 45 kiloliters of water per month so let's go and compare john and we're going to compare john if he stays in cape town and with someone that is staying in a good lane okay so we're going to to use that annex to show if to prove if john is correct or incorrect okay now here are the tariff block so according to the tariff block of cape town now will be in Cape Town, okay? So according to the tariff block in Cape Town, uh, they are charging a monthly cost of one hundred and four and fifty cent, and then for the first six kiloliter, they are going to charge you fifteen rand ten cent. So let's go and do the calculations. So I'm just going to write a uh, Cape Town here. So for the first six kiloliters, they're going to charge him 15 rand 10 cent. Then let's go to the next block. The next block charges 
greater than 6 to 10, 10, 5. Okay, so what are you going to do here? You're going to count from 7 up until 10, 5. Or if you don't want to count, you must take the maximum of the first block, which is 6, and you subtract with the maximum of block number 2, which is 10, 5, 0. Then we minus by 6, then we get that the difference there between greater than 6 and 10, 5 is 4, comma, is 4, 5. So for the second block, they are going to charge you 4, 5 liters, okay? At which price? How much is the price here? The price here is 20, 75. The price is 20, 75. Then the second block, how much are they? The third block, they are charging more than or greater than 10,5 to 35. So we are going to check the maximum of block number 2, which is 10,5. Then we minus with the maximum of block number 3, which is 35. So the difference there is 24,5. Okay, <clears throat> is 24 comma five multiply by remember our 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 idea is to reach 35 28 comma two our aim is to reach 30 i mean 45 kiloliters 28 comma two so if we check here we add the kiloliters that have been charged already is six plus four comma five plus 24 comma five which is 35 so it means that for with block number one, block number two, block number three, we have only charged 35 kiloliters. And then when you look at uh, John here, John is, go is estimated that he's going to use 45 kiloliters per month. Okay, so we're going to check how many kiloliters are left because already we have charged 45. I mean, we have charged 35. So we're going to say 45 minus 35 which gives us 10 and where will this 10 how much will they charge for this 10 kiloliters they are all going to be charged according to block number four so block number four they are going to charge them how much 52,04 so we're going to multiply here by 52,04 which is equals to <clears throat> now let's do the totals now we, we have six uh, 6 multiplied by 15,10 that gives us 90,6 then the second one 4,5 multiplied by 20,75 that gives us 93,375 this is 20 and then the next one is 24,5 multiply by 20 comma 20 i mean 28 comma 20 which gives me 690 comma 9 and then the last one is 10 multiplied by 52 comma 0 4 that gives me 520 comma 4 so when you add these units here you must get 45 kiloliters so it's going to be 6 plus 4,5 plus 24,5 plus 10. So it gives me the uh, 45 kiloliters. So let's get how much he will pay for those. So it's going to be 90,6 plus 93,375 plus 690,9 plus 520,4. That gives me 1,395,275. So on top of that, remember, they are talking about the monthly cost. Fixed monthly cost of 104. Meaning that this amount here now we're going to add 104, I saw a comma there, comma 50, comma 50. 104,5 then that that gives us 
comma seven seven five this is the month because we want to compare the annual charges therefore we're going to multiply here by 12 multiply by 12 so that means peter when he's staying in okay let me write it down here because i'm going to write a good lane that side i'm still going because this is 10 marks i'm still going so this is seventeen thousand nine hundred and ninety seven comma three okay so in if john is staying in cape town this is how much he's going to pay so let's check with some with someone who's staying in a uh, guru okay let's go and check the charges there so the charges in a guru lane is six they, they start to charging six units and then they are charging 13,5 they are charging 13,5 and in the second block charges between greater than 6 to 15 so we're gonna say we take the highest of we, we take this 6 and we minus 15 so 15 minus 6 that gives us 9 that means block number 2 charges 9 kiloliters 9 multiplied by let's check the price the price is 22,24 22,24 is equals to then we go to block number 3 block number 3 charges greater than 15 to 30 then we're gonna take this 15 and minus 30 that gives us 15 and then they charge how much 27,24 they will charge 15 multiplied by 27,24 so we can check if we have not reached 45 yet we're gonna say 6 plus 9 plus 15 we are not yet at 45 so we can go to the next block so the next block charges uh more than 32 greater than 30 to 45 okay so it's gonna be this 30 minus 45 30 minus 45 so they are charging 15 units so they are charging 15 units but now you have to be sure that you must not exit 45 let's add again 6 plus 9 plus 15 plus 15 so they give us exactly 45 that means we are still correct so let's go and check how much they charge for block number four according to agrolani municipality they charge 33,90 they charge 33,90 then let's go and do the total it is 6 multiplied by 13,5 which gives us 81 then 9 multiplied by 22,24 that one gives us 200,16 and then 15 multiplied by 27,24 that gives us 408 comma six and then uh, the last one is 15 multiplied by three three comma nine zero that gives us 508 comma five okay then let's add them together it's going to be 81 plus 200 comma one six plus 408 comma six plus 508 comma five and that gives us uh, right it gives us uh, let me check again 81 plus <coughs> 81 plus 200 comma 16 plus 408 comma 6 uh, plus 508,5 that gives us 1198,26 okay so when you look at equir lane here equir lane doesn't have the monthly fix because they say not applicable so it's not it's not there so we're just gonna take this amount and multiply it by 12.
because we want the annual difference so that's that gives me 14,379,12 therefore now we're going to calculate the difference this is 10 marks remember therefore the difference is going to be 17,997,3 minus 14,379,12 and that is equals to 17,997,3 that give us a difference of 3,618 thousand I mean 3,618 rent 18 cent it means that the statement of John is correct do you see that this person is going to be paying more John is going to be paying more. You see that the John state that if he choose to live in Cape Town, he will be paying 3,600 more. Do you see that? So John will be paying 3,600 more than the person staying in a group. So the statement is correct. Okay, <clears throat> let's proceed to question number five. Okay, question number five, I wish not to spend a lot of time because i can see that question four you have spent a lot of time all right uh, uh question number five uh shamila a teacher at the local high school is going on retirement the estimated value of her full pension fund benefit is three million four hundred and seventy i mean fifty seven thousand nine hundred and twenty rent she has two options to consider when retires option one withdraw a one i mean a third of the full pension fund option two withdraw 100 percent of her full pension fund benefit the table table four below indicates the tax payable on retirement benefit there we can see the table the the table the tax table now let's go to straight to the equation don't have a lot of questions here and then they say write out the uh, write out shamila's full pension fund benefit in weights remember the, the the amount is written as three million four five seven nine two zero so they want you to write this in weight so this in weight is three million Four hundred, four hundred and fifty-seven thousand, fifty-seven thousand nine hundred, nine hundred and twenty rent remember we are not talking about people here so we must talk about the rent then they say determine the amount of money that shamile can withdraw if she choose option one option one she's it says withdraw a third of the full pension fund so a third we know that is one over three so we're going to multiply this by three million four hundred and four uh four hundred and fifty seven thousand 920 and that will give give us 1 over 3 multiplied by 3 million 920 that gives us 1 million 500 and okay now <clears throat> let's move on <clears throat> they say uh shamila state that it, uh, shamila decide to choose option two as she wants to loan money to her daughter uh suraya who intend, intends on uh, relocating to new zealand okay uh, shamila state that the amount of tax she will she will pay on the estimated value of her pension fund of three million four hundred and fifty seven thousand nine hundred is more than one million verify 
showing all calculation whether his statement is correct so we are going to calculate the tax amount okay so we're gonna go to the tax table so this is not a case whereby you have to look at the the rebates and the what what so we don't include them here because we're not talking about the salary we talk about the pension so when the pension is there they only tax the pension without looking at your tax rebates okay right so according to this we're going to check remember her pension amount is three million so three million is not between one and five hundred again is not in this bracket again is not in this bracket so this amount if you look at it is above this amount so it's going to be taxed using bracket number one two three four it's going to be taxed using bracket number four so what does bracket number four says it says one hundred and thirty thousand five hundred plus thirty six percent of taxable income of taxable income above one million and fifty thousand so we're gonna have one hundred and thirty thousand five hundred then i like to change this amount this uh, percentage to be in a decimal so it becomes zero comma thirty six then we open the brackets we're gonna have three million four hundred and fifty seven nine hundred and twenty that is the taxable amount the weight above it means we subtract one million and fifty thousand so that's going to be one hundred and thirty thousand five hundred plus zero comma three six into brackets we're gonna have three million four hundred and fifty seven nine twenty minus one million and fifty thousand that gives us two million four hundred and seven thousand nine hundred and twenty. So we're gonna have one hundred and thirty thousand five hundred plus. Then we're gonna multiply this zero comma thirty six by this amount. So it's gonna be that will give us eight. 866,851,2 okay and then we add it with that amount 130,500 and then the tax amount uh, let me 130,500 plus 866,851,2 that gives us a tax amount of nine hundred and ninety-seven thousand nine hundred and fifty-one comma two rent. So that means this is the amount that she is going to be taxed. So she is the statement is invalid because she 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 says she's going to be taxed more than one million. So the statement is invalid. Okay then let's go to number b then the, in number b they say the ratio of the estimated value of uh, shamile's full pension before tax to her daughter's loan is 9.873 so this when you do a ratio you must pay attention here this one uh let me see this one we talk about shamile's full pension to her daughter's two it talks about this dot here and then this one represent who the daughters so <clears throat> what we're going to do we're going to try to break that down let me write number b here we're going to try to break it down this is her two daughter okay she's going to share with the daughter so that amount is going to be nine comma eight seven nine eight comma why so the man is going to be shared in this ratio okay so now already we know how much she is going to get how much is going to be the total pension fund the total pension fund we're not going to write it in the sight of the daughters because the daughters are not getting the pension fund they're going to get the share so all in all the, the mother here is going to get 
3,457,920. How much are the daughters going to get? We don't know. Guys, there's something about the cross multiplication. I'm just showing you a cache that makes sure that you know how to work out with the cross multiplication because if you were looking, you look at all my videos, everything I use, almost all the questions I will use the cross multiplication. So there's something about the cross multiplication. Pay attention, know how it works. Okay, because every time it works and it will give you the accurate answers. Okay. So we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to start with the question mark. So it's going to be question mark multiplied by that. That's going to be 9,8798 question mark, which is equal to 3,457,920. So we're going to divide both sides by 9,8798. We're also going to divide by 9,8798. So this will cancel this. Then we remain with the question mark. We know that the question mark represents the portion of the dot. Okay. 3475. 347. I mean, 57920 divided by 9,87. Nine eight that gives us a uh, three hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety eight comma nine eight seven eight. But if you check here, they said determine to the nearest thousand, it means that we must change our thousand. Okay, so look at this thousand, look at this. This is a hundred, isn't it? This is a hundred. So we are not changing this, but we are changing this. So if we change this, it allows us to add it with one because it's nine. So that means the answer is going to be rounded off to 350,000. Okay. So <clears throat> mm, that means this is the portion of the daughter. That means the daughter will get a share of 350,000. Then let's go to number C. They say, they say Suraya agrees to borrow the money at a simple interest rate of 7.5% per annum. She intends to repay the total amount with interest at the end of three years. Because this is the simple interest, it means that the simple, I mean the interest amount is fixed, it doesn't change. Okay, so let's calculate. Remember she is borrowing 350,000, okay. So it's going to be 350 multiplied by 7,8 over 100. Okay. 350,000 multiplied by 7,8 divided by 100, which gives us 27,300. Meaning that each and every year this amount will have the interest of 27,000. So we multiply by 3 years. Okay. That will give, give us 81,900. Therefore, when she pays back the money, she will pay 350,000 plus 81,900. Uh, and that means all in all, she will pay uh, 431,900. This is how much she's going to pay back. Okay. Right. Let's proceed because we are not yet done. We go to 5.2. 5.2 it has only four questions and then we will be done. Does it have... Oh, we still have an annex check. We still have an annex check here. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, Suraya has established that the cost of relocating a family of four to New Zealand is approximately 280000 Her husband is an entrepreneur and wants to start his own business in New Zealand. So, okay. So they say uh, Suraya, who is a teacher, will need a skilled uh, migrant resident visa while her husband will need an entrepreneur's visa. A skilled migrant 
a resident visa cost 2093 euros and a visa for entrepreneurs cost 4745 new zealand dollars so we are given the table below that shows the exchange rate for selected countries on the 30th of september 2021 can see that one dollar is equal to 14 we can see one one rand is equals to this euros and you can see that one british pound is cost to 24 what what that and we can see that one japanese yen is equals to zero comma that then the new zealand dollar one rand is equals to that okay let's go straight to the question then they say determine the exchange rate of the new zealand dollar in the term in the in terms of the euro on the three on the third of september 2021 in the form one new zealand dollar is meaning that uh, whatever that you start with here you're gonna say the new zealand dollar two or yeah two euros okay two euros so if when you look at the table they do not give you the relationship so they want you to create a relationship okay so how are you going to create a relationship between the dollars i mean the new zealand dollars and the euros both of them if you check they are linked to the rent okay so when you look at the table they say one one za represent let, let's write it here one za represent uh, 0 0.0581765 euros and they again say one za one za represent 0 0.0962 nine nine zero seven new zealand dollars okay so we need to create the relationship so what we're going to do is very simple here so we are now going to remove those zars we are going to remove those zars so what are we going to do instead of this za we are going to put this because we can see that one za represent zero comma this of new zealand dollars because we want the new zealand dollars to be on the left and the euro to be on the right okay so we are now we are only going to take this everything here and put it this side instead of writing one za so we're gonna have zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven new zealand uh dollar is equal to zero comma zero five eight one seven six five euros so now because we want our answer to be one new zealand dollar we want to remain with one so we can divide this side by zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven we will get one so since this side we divide by one by this number we're also gonna come to this side and divide by 0 comma 0 9 6 9 9 0 7 so one new zealand one new zealand dollar is equal to let me remove this one because now i'm starting to write chakalaka here i'm starting to write chakalaka one new zealand dollar is two then we're gonna we're gonna say zero comma zero five eight one seven seven six five divide by zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven and that gives us zero comma five nine nine eight one five two four euros remember here guys so you don't have to round off here we don't round off in currencies we don't round off guys play far from rounding off when you're dealing with the currency 
Then let's go to 5.2.2. Calculate round to the nearest hundred rand the total cost of two vis uh, visas that they will require on the 30th of on the 3rd of September. We want to see how much they are going to spend in what in rands because all of them they are relocating from from south africa so they will be exchanging rents okay so we want to see how many rents they are going to spend because the visas are given in foreign currencies okay so let's start with uh let's start with the Sura with suraya suraya is going to spend 2093 euros so we have to convert this 209 uh, 2093 euros into rents so we must check the relationship between the euros and the rent so according to the table there, let me write it here, 5.2.2. According to the table there, they say 0, 0,058176 euros is equals to 1 za. Then I'm going to introduce my cross multiplication. On the left, I'm given what? The euros. On the right is the rent. So which one do I want? I want the rent. Which one do I have? <coughs> I have the euros. Whereby I have 2,093 euros. So what do we do? We cross multiply. That will be question mark multiplying by that. That will be 0, 0,058176. <laughs> Mark is equals to 2093. Then we divide both sides by 0, 0,0581765. Then we also divide here by 0, 0,0581765. So our question mark is equals to. <coughs> Let me, I will see if I would have a space here. Okay, 2,093, 2,093 divided by 0, 0,058175. That gives me uh, 35,976,726. So do not yet round it off to the nearest 100 you will round off everything at the end okay therefore let's go to the husband now <clears throat> the husband is going to new zealand so the the visa the cost of the visa is given in new zealand so we're going to check the relationship between the new zealand and the czar they are saying 0, 0.09 New Zealand dollars is equal to one za. So which side do we want? We introduce the cross multiplication. We want the za, but we are given four thousand four thousand seven hundred and forty-five. Four thousand seven hundred and forty-five New Zealand dollar. So what do we do? Cross multiplication. So question mark multiply by that that's going to be zero comma zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven question mark that will be uh one multiply by that that's going to be four thousand seven hundred and forty five therefore we divide both sides because we need the value of this question mark zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven we also divide here this one will cancel this one zero comma zero nine six nine nine zero seven therefore question mark remember our question mark is representing the za that means it's in rent four seven four five divide by zero comma zero <coughs> nine six nine nine zero seven that gives me Forty-eight thousand nine hundred and twenty-two comma two one six two five. 
okay in rent i must write the rent therefore we're going to say that will be 30 the first one that one oh it was 35 35 rent 35,976,726 plus 48,922,21625 <coughs> for i mean 35,976,726 plus 48,922,21625 that gives me 84,008 nine eight comma nine four two two five but then they said you must you must round it off uh to the nearest you must round it off to the nearest what let me i think i forgot or you must round it off to the nearest hundred okay <coughs> You must round it off to the nearest hundred. So that means that our nearest hundreds here, you are not going to look at this number because this one is a thousand. Okay. So our hundreds they are talking about this number. So that's going to be eighty-four thousand nine hundred. Okay, then let's go to the next question. Oh, I've written on the next question. Oh la la. Okay, the graph the graphs on an exchange represent the monthly exchange rate of Chinese yen and the US dollars from July 2020 to December 2020. Let's go and check that annex. Okay, let me rotate it. Right, yeah, there is the annex chart there. So let's look. Okay, let me just go back. This is the they say the exchange rate in Chinese yen per US dollar. So we can see that we can see that then they say state with a reason which graphs a chinese citizen will use to explain that this country's currency is strengthening against the us dollar over the six month period which graphs can you use here we can use graph number a because <coughs> graph number a is giving more details because if you look at graph number b all the graphs they look similar they looks they look more equal but when you look at graph number a it gives you the details and then you, you can see that the graph is going down okay so when it goes down it means that the other currency is strengthening uh, uh, against the other currency you understand okay and then they say the same set of data uh let me see is there anything that I skipped on that the, the, the last one? Okay, no, I didn't skip anything. Then the same set of data was used to draw graph A and B. Give a valid reason why the graphs looks different. They say they have used the same data to draw the graph. So, but the difference is how the graph was drawn. But remember, they have used the same data. Okay, but what if, look, observe here, you have six, you have seven. Look at this. And look at this look at this look at this so this is the only difference that you can spot here it means the reason why the, the, the graphs look the same is because they have used different scale to draw the graphs okay so guys if you have watched for uh for this far i thank you guys for really supporting my channel and then i hope that you're gonna do well in your exams whichever exams that you're going to write i wish you a good luck guys do well pass your metric okay and if you do not subscribe to this channel guys make sure that you hit that subscribe button you like and then you share these videos okay so that other people can also get this free knowledge until we meet next time with another video